Welcome to the Fortitude Podcast. We are here with the superintendent, Dr. Bernie Dubray, ready for the January superintendent's update. It just keeps rolling along. Sure does. Pages on the calendar. Yep. Did you have a good break? Pretty good. Pretty good. It was it was long, but not too long. Weather was fabulous. It was just long enough that people were ready to come back and uh, at the same time had a good good time with their families and were able to do whatever traveling they needed to. But I think everybody was ready to come back. So with that, we, uh, we're here, as we always are, following a board meeting. We had a couple of things come up um, in there. One of them was that the board met our Grow Your Own teachers um, who were named this year. So this year, the Fort Zumwalt Education Foundation, which is a completely separate entity and not-for-profit, um, was able to award three uh, forgivable loans. Do you want to share a little bit about what these kids are, are in for the next four years after they graduate Fort Zumwalt? Yeah, uh, you know, those uh, three students have, have been uh, selected in the same hiring practice that um, our teachers go through. So it was a pretty rigorous vetting of the students that applied, I think we had over 20 uh, applications for the scholarships this year. And then they'll have, um, for the next four years, they'll get $4,000 a semester or a total of $32,000 that'll support them and uh, for tuition and uh, materials, books, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, that uh, is a pretty sizable scholarship. I mean, when you start looking at what's out there, that kind of gets your attention. So. Uh, that'll be a big help for them. And then while they're in school, they'll have the opportunity on uh, Christmas and spring break to come home and, and meet with uh, uh, the district administration and uh, other Grow Your Own teachers and, and do some um, PD for themselves as um, new teachers. And then uh, when they do graduate, they'll have a job waiting for them as long as they meet all the standards that we establish. And um, that's a pretty nice thing to know that you've got a job um, waiting for you. I know when I graduated uh, a long time ago, um, it was pretty pretty hectic uh, to interview. I know I interviewed four or five school districts before I got my job in the Pattonville School District. So um, it's pretty stressful. And these kids, that stress, they don't have to worry about. They've got a job. Now, they have to agree to teach for four years, at least four years, in Fort Zumwalt. Um, in Fort Zumwalt. And uh, then uh, that that's one of the requirements of the forgivable loan, which is what it is. So that's going to be high school math, well, secondary math, secondary science, industrial tech and engineering, special ed across the board. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are areas, and we've been doing this since... Two, 2006. Because 17 of them in our classrooms. Yeah. 17 yeah. alum who went through this program and have become mm -hmm. teachers in, and uh, amazing, successful teachers mm -hmm. in our district. So um, it's just one way. You know, people ask all the time, how are you guys doing with teacher hiring? Is the shortage yeah. affecting you? This is something that we've had in place for many years now that uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is sending people to us to find out how to do. Yeah, Desi will point out that uh, Fort Zumwalt has the number one program, Grow Your Own Teacher program in the state, and they, you know, send people to us to figure out how we did it. It's, um, everybody does it different, but we don't put any taxpayer money towards it. I was just about to say, it's all private funds. Yeah. A uh, couple of fundraisers a year, a golf tournament, a trivia night. Um, but one of the other really interesting things is uh, staff payroll with deduction. Mm -hmm. Staff members can volunteer to have payroll deducted contributions to the foundation made to support up and coming. It's amazing to me how teachers want to support up and coming teachers. It's been that way since the beginning. Yeah, the uh, um, we hear, we actually get. $20,000 a year from our staff. We have a, a large enough staff that it only takes a dollar or two per pay period, and we bring in about $20,000 a year. We raise about 50000 total. So between the golf tournament and the 5K run and the trivia night um, and the teacher contribution, about $50,000 to support all these candidates. We have another seven in the pipeline in college now mm -hmm. that are going to join those 17 
uh, in the next few years. So we're going to have a pretty sizable number of, of people that uh, came through the Grow Your Own Teacher program, and um, that's that's what is being promoted throughout the country. Grow your own. Mm -hmm. If you can't find them, grow your own, and we're doing it. So uh, for anybody listening who's interested in learning more, you can find a link to the foundation or at least to the information about the Grow Your Own Teacher program on our district website. And watch for upcoming events because that 5K Dr. Dubray mentioned is typically in the spring. Yes. And then, of course, by spring, we will be thinking golf, hardcore thinking golf, right, Dr. Dubray? Yes. So uh, watch for information on that tournament as well. Um, other stuff that's been going on lately, the board heard a couple of presentations, a couple of updates. Well, a couple of things that went on. Um, and, um, they heard an assessment report from our uh, director, uh, executive director of assessment, um, data and assessment, uh, Mike Neal. And uh, Mike made a, a pretty lengthy report that uh, pointed out how we compare um, with other school districts of similar size in our state. And he actually, uh, based on MAP test scores and EOCs in the course exam test scores, um, he actually uh, uh, compared us with the uh, uh, top 25 uh, school districts in size in the state. And uh, we were very favorable in terms of scores. Uh, right in there with Parkway and Rockwood. Uh, Francis Howell scores very well in, in all uh, categories also. Um, but, um, I mean, we, you know, in some cases we were ahead of Parkway and Rockwood. And, and during my lifetime when I was younger, um, Parkway was always the school district that you st strive to be meet uh, and be like. And um, then Rockwood came along and, and they, they are in a similar vein. But I still think Parkway is probably the one uh, that uh, people uh, try to emulate as much as possible and we've exceeded them in um, in our test scores as well so Mike's report was very uh, validating of what has been going on in curriculum uh, development and professional development in our school district that it's paying off and our students are well prepared to uh, to go on to the whatever uh, plans they have in the future so uh, that was another thing that went on. And then we also gave uh, committee reports. Uh, we just gave updates to the school board. We have four committees operating now. Um, bullying and prevention, uh, courtesy and respect, uh, diversity and awareness, and then our CSIP committee. Um, those four committees are operating with... Uh, uh, not only our uh, our own staff but also uh, members of the community on there and we just gave brief updates as to what's going on with those communities and i think the board was pleased with the progress we've made in the in the six months or so that we've uh, had those committees established so those are some things that went on that i think maybe the audience will be interested in the CSIP committee, the Continuous School Improvement Plan, they actually have a community forum coming up as well. So I'm going to just go ahead and plug that here because February 7th at 6 p.m., they are going to be having a community forum at our Professional Development and Technology Center to talk about the work that they've done so far and answer questions and just have that conversation and, and keep the lines of communication open. So um, that'll be... February 7th. Yes. So as part of the committee work. Right. Um, there's a lot of other committees at work down in Jefferson City. Mm -hmm. um, the emails have already started coming in, all the regular daily legislative updates. Um, what are you watching? What are you hoping that our employees and, and families and constituents and residents are watching? Well, I mean, we're watching um, everything down there. Uh, and of course, um, the thing we're we're most concerned with is that the legislators continue to fully fund the foundation formula, that is the uh, major source or, or one of the major sources of revenue of uh, many school districts, including Fort Sumall. We get about thirty percent of our um, of revenue of our total revenue from from uh, state support. That's the foundation formula. Um, we're also hoping that the uh, legislatures will continue to fully fund the transportation formula. 
because that was something that we weren't expecting last year, and that's that's great that they were able to find the money to uh, fund that because we were subsidizing our transportation costs, and with uh, this money coming in, it, it goes a long way towards uh, offsetting what our costs are for transportation. There's a reason, though, that we were pleasantly surprised by that. I mean, in, what was it, 30 years, it had never been fully funded? So it's when they were able... Or, 20 or 30, yeah. Okay, so when they were able to do that last year, and you say we were pleasantly surprised, is, what was the number, what was the difference when they gave us everything, when they met the obligations of the transportation formula, how much more did that mean to us in dollars? Uh, about five million. And so that's five million that we're not having to find somewhere else from our local dollars. Correct. Yeah, we were subsidizing okay. that amount of uh, expense in the transportation um, department. We were subsidizing that, and this is with this five million. That's less that we have to subsidize, so that money can be used elsewhere, and in the uh, budget because there's always needs. Uh, like that. So those are the things we're watching. And the, we're also watching uh, some of the um, legislators that are uh, looking to cut funding uh, through uh, tax cuts. And uh, everybody likes tax cuts, but um, that comes with a price as far as are you going to be able to do your roads and bridges the way you would like? Are you going to be able to support your schools? You know, is it is it going to be able to fully fund uh, health care and uh, things that uh, a lot of that those funds go towards. So, like I said, I understand people would like to have lower taxes, and I think there will be a, a real push on the part of some of the legislatures to do that, legislators. And um, also, um, there's some movement to try to move uh, public money into private areas, like vouchers that, that are uh, existing and they're looking to increase. So... It's a uh, it's something that we have an obligation to watch carefully and make our uh, wishes known to our legislators um, if uh, you know what's good for the schools and, and what isn't good. So with that, we're kind of looking down the road a little bit. We're looking at we're looking at spring. Do I want to say we're looking at spring? It's January, mm -hmm. um, but we are looking I at. I wouldn't say it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it I too loud. Say it, yeah. uh, but we are looking at spring in that there was one other action by the board, and that was to uh, firm up the ballot so they could send it over to the election authority. Right. So spring, April 4th is election day, and mm -hmm. we have seven candidates. We for have three seven seats. candidates, uh, and I think last year we had nine, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. But mm -hmm. uh, at any rate, this year seven, and this is an unusual year. Every third year um, for elections for school boards, you have three candidates or three seats that are up. So we have three seats out of our seven that are up. And uh, this year we have uh, Arnie Dinoff, Greg Sartorius, Mark Pratt, Erica Powers, uh, Michael Smith, Matt Graham, and Catherine Bird. Those are our seven candidates, and that's the order that they will be voted on. Um, this uh, uh, election, it's the top three vote getters that win those three three year terms. So when you go in, it's going to say vote for three. It's going to say vote for three, and then it's. Uh, uh, you know, we, we see who we get, and, and uh, they get sworn in, and we have a new board, and we... And that there's pretty much no lag on that. Like, we voted in November, and all the folks are showing up in Jefferson City and Washington, D.C. in January. With this, we vote on April 4th, and we have to have that all certified and in place 10 days afterward? 10 days. And that's that's the law because of... Yeah, the kind of district Fort, we are. Fort Zumwalt is considered to be an urban school district, and that's uh, districts that are in first-class counties uh, and have cities of 60,000 uh, 60, uh, people or more. And because of that uh, issue, we are designated as urban, and that means we have to organ reorganize quicker than what we might if uh, we were non uh urban school district. So it'll be within 10 days we have to reorganize and swear those new board members in. So that was a lot of business of running a school district. What's been the most fun thing you've seen out in the building since we got back from break? Mm. 
Kids in shorts at recess is mine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. It's a little rough, but I've seen some. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I mean, I always have fun when I'm out in the building, so I don't know if there's any one thing that I would, uh, I would point out, but I'm just happy to be out there and seeing the kids. And You just like seeing them back at work because they like get to it right away. They do. They do. They sure do. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what we're going to get here before too long. What? We're going to sign up a whole new batch of kindergartners starting oh, yeah. March 1st. Yeah. So, listeners, if you know anybody who's going to be five on or before July 31st, talk with their grown-up because it's time to get some paperwork together and come see us here at Fort Zumwalt on March 1st when kindergarten enrollment opens. Um, I think I'm done with you for this month. Okay. Are you okay with that? I am. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You'll still come back? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. This has been the Fortitude Podcast Superintendent's Update. Remember to like or subscribe. Remember to tell a friend to tune in. You can find it right there on the Fort Zoom Walt website. Just scroll down to the Fortitude button. Thanks for listening.